Hey guys, Mitch back with another weekly tech tip. So last week, Brett did a really cool demo for you guys uh, showing off a new feature in the XFS file system. Well, not so much new to XFS as so much as it's new to CentOS 8 and being enabled by default, and that's the RefLink module. So today we're going to talk about that, but even go a little further and show what we use it for here at 45 Drives for some of our solutions with our customers. So as you saw in the demo last week, when Brett did his RefLink demo, you saw that essentially it allows you to copy files and without actually having to copy that file block by block into a separate location. The RefLink module will instead just reference that data and it saves you space and it makes it much, much snappier and much quicker to make a copy of your data. So that can be used for a whole different uh, array of possibilities, but the way that we use it here at 45 Drives is with one of our pre-canned kind of solutions that we use with Veeam. So what Veeam's fast clone technology allows you to do is take advantage of that RefLink module in the XFS file system to allow for much faster synthetic full backups, uh, merging of backup data, and then also to allow it to not take up such a big footprint as well. So that was a little bit about the background of how Veeam actually uses RefLink in its backup and replication software. But let's actually stop talking about it and let's start showing you. So I'm going to bring you over to my desk and we'll do a little demo showing you how we take our Ceph clusters and our RVDs, Rados block devices, A, along with our XFS file system, B, and our Veeam backup and replication software, C, to make a really nice full solution for our customers that have backup and replication needs. So let's head over now. So I talked a little bit about Veeam in the intro, so I'm just going to show you. Let's hop on over to my remote desktop here and, and take a look at Veeam Backup and Replication. So this is a software that is very widely used in the industry to have a backup infrastructure for your virtual machines and for your uh, workstations in, in a production environment. So we have a, a test environment here configured, and what we'll see here is we have our backup repositories. We first right now have one Ceph backup repository repository configured and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how we go through step by step and configure a scale out backup repository with Veeam using XFS, RBDs and the RefLink module. So as I said one is already configured we'll take a look at it here uh, its host name is Veeam Repo 1.45 lab so it's our lab computer and we can see the mount point is mount Veeam 1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk through creating a secondary uh, replication target, a backup repository, step by step. So let's jump in. So we have our two backup repository here, repositories here, and so essentially the only difference between the two is Veeam 1 is already configured and Veeam 2 is just a bare CentOS install. Now both of them have the Ceph packages already installed, uh, but other than that if we do a Ceph-S we can see here cluster 1 can communicate, or sorry, Veeam repo 1 can communicate with the cluster, whereas Veeam Repo 2, while it has the packages, it actually doesn't have any way to communicate with the cluster yet. So what you have to do first and foremost is allow your repository or your Linux client to be able to communicate with that cluster. So what you do is log into one of your Ceph clusters monitors. In this instance, MHOSD1 is also a monitor. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move into our Ceph folder and we're going to copy over two files. The first one is the Ceph config file and the second one is the keyring. So for this purpose for the demo, we're just going to be using the admin keyring, but using the CephX protocol, you may be able to use whatever you'd like. If you want to give very specific permissions for a user, you can create different key rings for different users or in different situations. But as I said, we'll just use the admin for this instance. So let's copy that over. Uh, Ceph.com first. And next, let's move over the key ring. Now with those two things now added on this machine, this machine should now have the ability to communicate and authenticate with the cluster. So let's try and make sure. So there we go. As we can see, it can now communicate with the cluster. So the next step for this is if we take a look at VM1 and we look at our block devices, we can see that we have an RBD that is currently running on VM1 and is mounted at 
and mount slash beam one. So that is the RBD that we mount on this machine. Then we put the XFS file system on it with the reflink kernel module uh, enabled. So we're gonna have to do the same thing for this machine. So now that this secondary machine can communicate with the cluster, you can run a command called rbdls and it lists all the RBDs that exist on this cluster. So we can see we've already created two here. So Veeam Demo 1 exists on repo 1 and we're gonna use Veeam Demo 2 here to put it on Veeam uh, repo 2. But just to show how easy it is to create a block device on RBD and Ceph, it's as easy as going to images, I'll just let these load. You can see Veeam 1 and 2 are there. I'm going to create, give it a name, select your pool, select your size. We're just going to give it one gig here. And then if there's any features you want to give it, uh, depending on what you're using it for, you would do it here. Then you create that RBD, and instantly it gets created. They're thinly provisioned, so you don't have to wait around while it gets created if you're creating a very large one. So back to the demo. So we have that Veeam Demo 2, and we want to get that mounted on this machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to RBD map command. First you select the pool, then the name. That's all it takes. And so now we can see that RBD is now mapped to RBD0 on this machine. So our next step is to create a file system on that RBD. So let's go make a fess. fess. Now the only thing that's different here between the normal making of the file system, well the dash K ensures that no wasted blocks, but the only thing is different is we do a dash M, then we run reflink equals one, and we can do CRC equals one as well, but it is already enabled by default, but just uh, to be very precise. And then we do dev, and now we point it to our RBD. Now we wait for it to get created. All right, so there we go. So now our file system is created. So now we have to make a mount point for it and we have to mount that file system. So let's make dir mount, and this one is called Veeam2. All right, so now all we have to do is mount that new file system that exists on RBD and mount it to our new mount point. And if we take a look, we have a file system mounted with 497 free gigs of it ready to go very similar to this machine. And we can also see that uh, the reflink was enabled here as well. So that's ready to go. Now, if this was in a production environment, there are two extra things that we would do. Obviously, we'd create an entry in our file system table at Etsy FS tab. And then also, the same way that you create an entry for a file system on your file system table, well, RBDs also have entries as well in what's called an RBD map. So the same way that file system table is for on reboot, so the file system gets remounted, well, the RBD map file is to ensure that your RBDs get mapped every time at reboot as well. So we can just take a look at um, oh <laughs> I meant to say cat uh, sorry about that guys there we go so we uh, this is the RBD map file here so all you essentially put in this entry is the pool name the image name and then you do ID whatever your client is so if your client is admin you do ID admin and then you do keyring and wherever the keyring is at you would point it to that file now on reboot once you set that that RBD will get mapped uh, at boot time okay so that being said now it's time to continue on on the Veeam side so we can see here we have one backup repository called Ceph1. Now it's time to create a secondary. Let's do that. So we're doing add direct attached storage. We're choosing Linux. And let's call this Ceph underscore 2. So I already have this repo uh, credentials here, but otherwise you would just add new and you can use either username and password or if you'd like to use SSH keys, you can do that as well. But for simplicity, we're just going to add VM repo two here, go to next. Now we're gonna browse and we're gonna find that mount point that we just created that exists on that RBD. Go to mount and we call Veeam two. Now, what we have to do is turn on fast cloning services. Let me actually just make sure that Veeam underscore two is the right point. Uh, so we don't have to do this twice. Uh, no, it's not, no, underscore. And there we go. 
Okay, so now we're going to make sure we enable fast cloning. This is what allows uh, Veeam to take advantage of the reflink module. And we don't have to limit any concurrent tasks because Ceph can handle a whole lot of concurrent tasks. Um, it's made to be extremely uh, high performance for th uh, very high throughput with very high concurrent tasks running at the same time. Uh, so next, we hit next and now it's going to make sure that XFS is enabled and it was so now we just complete our uh, backup repository and let it finish oh I should mention also where it's saying discovering installed packages here there are two packages that you will want to install on your CentOS machine uh, prior to running all of this it's Perl and Perl data dumper uh, you will find that on the guide on Veeam's pages as well. Uh, it'll tell you exactly what you need to download. Otherwise, uh, you'll get through the entire process, but when you go to actually populate the mount points, they won't work. It will sit there and it will not be able to find the mount points. So you will want to install those packages as well. Okay, so it's now finished and we are ready to continue. So now we have our two backup repositories, but what we want to do now to finish this entire architecture is to build it into a scalar repository. So let's build a scalar repository. And what we're also going to do here is another extra little treat is we're going to add an object storage for the scalar repository as well as the capacity tier. So the cool thing about Ceph is since it has object, file system, and block all on the same cluster, you can actually use use Ceph for this entire infrastructure if you'd want to, or if you just want to use Ceph for the performance tier of your scalar repository, you can use that as well, and that will work perfectly with uh, with Veeam. So let's do that. So let's call this Ceph scale out, and we're going to start adding our repository. So these are our performance tier. So these are our very fast RBDs that are going to act as a performance tier. So we add those, and we continue. Now we can choose here, depending on your use case, you may want to choose one or the other. So data locality ensures that all backups are placed on the exact same extent or the exact same backup repository, whereas performance allows it to be be placed on either one at any given time. Um, now the great thing about you know this being Ceph as the backing device and the backing RBD is that even if these gateway machines uh, completely fail and you can't run your actual backup repository, your data will be safe because that RBD will never get destroyed. It exists on the backing cluster. So you could just spin up a new gateway to run your uh, backup repository. So it all depends on how you'd like to do this, but let's just keep it at data locality and we'll continue. Now, here's where we decide if we want to extend the scalar repository with some object storage. And in this instance, we are going to use one of our other Ceph clusters here on site to do that. So let's add. And you can see here we can use Amazon S3 or we can use S3 compatible storage. And that's what we'll use for Ceph. Now we'll call this Ceph object. Now the service point, so we're just going to use our raw IP here. And I already have the credentials here as well, so that'll make it much easier. So these are just our keys for our uh, S3 buckets. So we continue, and you'll see that this is now running. It's it's saying that the certificate can't be verified. These are self-signed certificates, so that's going to come up uh, for your own cluster. Now, if you want to use an actual certificate authority, this you will be able to ignore this part. So we'll continue, and now what we can see here is we have many different buckets that exist on this user. So this user has all different buckets here, and we can use any one of them just for a test. So let's just call it use testing123, and let's create a new folder inside of that. So let's call it new folder test repo. And now that's what we're going to use. So now we can, if we want to do any more settings, like if we want to lim limit object storage to a certain amount of terabytes or make certain backups immutable. So if you want to take advantage of read once, write many, we can en uh, enable that as well. So very, very flexible in how you configure this. Now hit next, and now it's just going to uh, build this scalar repository. Now this may take a, a few seconds or a few minutes depending on your configuration, but there we go. It didn't take long at all. So we can see our object repository was sex successfully created and our scalar repository is now ready to go. So now we just hit apply. Now it's checking for backups 
and saving our scale up repository. Okay, so there we go. So our scale up backup repository was created successfully. Well, there you have it. That was us showing off how we can build our Ceph clusters uh, with Veeam using XFS and the RefLink module to build a really robust, really high performing scale out repository with Veeam backup and replication. All right, so that was a demo showing off how our Ceph clusters work in conjunction with Veeam software to allow for a very robust and highly performing and highly available uh, backup and replication solution. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next one.